The 2024 NFL Draft is rapidly approaching, and on today's Locked On Utes, we're going to be breaking down who's going to be the first Ute off the board, as well as how many Utah football players are going to be selected. All that and more coming up. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you like and subscribe. Love interacting with all of you in the YouTube comments as well as on social media, where you can follow our show on X at Locked On Utes. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out out today at nissanusa.com my name is jt was still former intern inside the university of utah athletic department excited to be joined on today's episode of locked on utes by pff's college football analyst max chadwick and also nfl draft analyst as that's what we're going to be diving into on today's <laughs> show and max let's get right into it when talking about who the first Ute off the board was going to be if this has changed a lot for me there was a time i thought it was going to be satawa laumea because i just thought the interior protection that he could provide always thought he would be a guard better the tackle i thought he was going to be the first guy with the season jonah ellis was having I thought it was going to be him, maybe even tempted by the speed of Sione Vaki. Maybe he had a shot, but at this point, I actually think it's going to be Cole Bishop. And it's not just because of some of the combine testing, but I even thought like Jim Nagy made a great point when he brought up how there's a guy who's getting a lot of buzz. This was some from the director of the senior bowl said that Cole Bishop's a guy who he's had scouts tell him that he's goals not getting out of round two. So I think Cole has a tremendous chance to be the first Ute selected. And after all he accomplished at Utah, wh- why would he not be in so many ways? But Max, what are your thoughts on Cole as a player? Yeah, yeah. well, thanks for having me on again, JT. And, and yeah, the Cole Bishop, I, I think he's one of the biggest winners from the Combine. Um, he was obviously a terrific athlete that he tested out as the Combine. And that, you know, I knew he was a good athlete. I did not anticipate him being that elite, honestly. So um, that was fantastic to see from him and, and, and good for him, honestly. I, I think... I would still say Jonah Ellis would be my pick for the first U off the board. I think both of them, I would probably say both he and um, and Cole Bishop, I would probably say would be third round picks. If, if I had to predict right now, I, I think both of them would go in the third round. But uh, I, honestly, there's like a difference of, uh, of not that many players between them, honestly. So I, I wouldn't be surprised by either one of them uh, being the first off the board. But yeah, I mean, just to p- kind of put it into context, Cole Bishop, According to Kentley Platt's relative athletic score, which basically takes your combine measurables and compares them to basically every player who's ever measured at the combine at your position. Cole Bishop tested out as a 99th percentile safety. Uh, so that that really, I, like I said, that is an elite, elite athlete, great downhill player, really good pass rusher, which you don't really see too much from safeties, really good run defender as well. There are, I think, some other, you know, uh, question marks with him in terms of how well he could be a center fielder at, at safety. But yeah. if you're looking for an in the box safety, yes. I think he's a guy that, that would be a very valuable piece. So like I said, I'm, I'm still kind of thinking Jonah Ellis would be the first mute off the board, but I would not be surprised if it, is, uh, it does end up being Cole Bishop. I love that you brought up how good he is in the box. I think a lot of times because of Sione Vaki's skills also in the box that Cole had to play outside of it many a times, and it's not his strength. He's best in the box, and that's where I'm really excited to see him unleashed at the next level in the NFL, just coming off a season where he had 60 tackles. You mentioned him being a strong pass rusher, too. Did have three sacks. Always has been a good blitzer, and just a really stout tackler I think is going to make an impact. But look, safety is an important position in the NFL, but nowhere near the most important. One of the top three, I always believe, is pass rush. So it makes a lot of sense why you would lean towards a guy like Jonah Ellis. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's coming off a season in which he had 12 sacks. And whenever you watch Jonah win, it's not like, oh, will this translate? I think it's pretty easily going to translate. When you look at how skilled he is with his hands, the spin move is already dangerous. And I think it is going to even give some NFL guys some problems. I think he can come in and rotate right away. I'm not going to say he's going to be a day one defensive end starter. But if you want to bring him in on third and long, we're at have him rush from the outside or the interior. I think he can do that. So I'm a big fan of Jonah's game, but what about his game makes him your pick to be the top you selected first? 
I would probably say, I think he broke it down really well. I think he's got really good hand usage. He's mm-hmm. a guy who reminds me a lot of another player in this class, Latu Latu, who they're not mm-hmm. going to wow you with their athletic traits. They're not going to wow you with their length or, or size or anything like that. But they are extremely developed in their pass rushing toolbox. I think Latu a little bit more than Ellis, which is why I think Latu ultimately end up being a first round pick and honestly is my top edge in this draft right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think Jonah Ellis is definitely a guy that I would I would probably take in the second round. I think he's going to end up being in the third round. Yeah. Um, but because I, I just think you know there, there's some measurable concerns with him when you look at uh at where had an injury too, which sometimes yeah, scares things away. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, has, he has below average arms at 33 inch arms. Now it's not like it's, it's unplayable. 33 inch arms are enough. It's 48th percentile for edges. Uh, but you know, obviously he's six foot two is 27th percentile. 248 31st percentile so um that doesn't have very great length for the position uh which would be an issue for him as a full-time edge um and i don't think he's that strong either um so he's got to develop some some strength if he can add weight honestly to his frame but uh he's a very flexible player really quick player and like i said he's got excellent pass rushing toolbox already so i would take him the second round i think he's going to be i think he definitely will end up being a a day two pick in the nfl draft though yeah, I, I would be awesome if him and Cole could get there. Either way, we don't expect no matter where those guys end up going, probably won't fall outside of the third round. Just tr- two tremendous players for this Utah defense here. And look, they're not the only guy, too. Let's look at another guy after that, Innes Atawal Aumea. I think, look, Sione Vaki will be the one who draws a lot of the headlines next, but you got to be able to protect the quarterback. It's the most important position on the field, and Satawa showed an ability to do that at the high level at Utah. He was a pretty good tackle, but it feels like he can be a really an even better guard. I'm not saying – I don't think he's going to start day one in the NFL, but I think he can be a really strong backup piece. I think the versatility is really key for teams. The fact that he's played a little bit of tackle I think is nice, just so if you have injuries in a pinch when only so many guys can be active, you could kick him out to tackle still. But especially as a guard, like he's just such a great run blocker. I think that's got to really excite teams. And as an interior pass protector, I think he does a really good job. Outside is where guys like Latu gave him problems. You mentioned your top ed rusher. Like going against guys – like that is what makes me watch the towel and go he's better on the inside but i think he can be really good on the inside at the next level yeah i think i would i would classify him as a guard uh for the next level mm-hmm. and, and you mentioned yep. before how jonah ellis's length is going to be an issue um i think it's the same thing with the Lamea. i think you look at him right now obviously six foot four uh not great height but the more important trait that you look for an off tackles is arm length uh he has less than uh or i should like around 32 and three quarter inch arms uh, that's in the 15th percentile uh, for offensive tackle. So I think he's definitely a guy that you would want to play um, on the inside, probably at offensive guard at the next level. And if you do that, then he's got well above average me- measurables for offensive guard. So I-, I agree with you. I don't think he's got enough. He's got what it takes to stick at left uh, at office tackle long term. But um, yeah, he's definitely a guy that I like. And I-, I think he showed some good stuff on tape this past season. Um, did struggle as a pass blocker. I will say he didn't allow a sack all year, but I think there were times where he beat, like you mentioned, that, that UCLA game. Um, but as a run blocker, I think it's a little bit better. So I, I like him again. I like him more on the interior. And I think those pass blocking concerns that you have, um, could be mitigated by him kicking inside to guard. So I, again, I, I like him. I think I would take him probably somewhere on day three, um, uh, probably fourth, maybe fifth round, uh, yeah. early fifth round. I'd probably say for Satao Laumea, but, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. he's definitely a guy that you could take in and hope could develop into a, uh, starting guard for you long-term. To your point, I'm pretty sure against Washington, I think Bryson threw a pick six. I think it was a play that he got beat for a sack on the outside too, going against, I I can't remember if Trice was lined up for him there, if he was the one on the opposite Mm -hmm. end. I mean, Washington has some good pass rushers, no matter which side you're on basically too. So it it could have been either one, but definitely an interesting thing to see where he will end up at NFL wise, because we do feel like it's going to be a guard. So curious which team will select him. And we've talked about three of the Utes that are pretty much guaranteed to get get drafted. We've got to talk about the last one in a super speed guy in Sione Vaki who could be fun offensively or defensively yeah. depending on what an NFL team is looking for gonna dive into Sione Vaki's game in one moment but first want to talk to you all about one of the sponsors of our episode of Locked On Utes today it's our friends at Manscaped this episode is brought to you by the spring cleaning champions Manscaped this season make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming clear out the winter bush with Manscaped lawnmower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like a spring flower embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. You can go to manscaped.com and use code LOCKEDON. It's all caps, no spaces, for 20% off plus free shipping. 
after using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever, and you guys can too. Introducing, as we mentioned, the Season Champ, the Lawnmower 5.0. Their fifth generation trimmer features two inexchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. I really enjoy this thing because it comes out with a compact case. I take it with me everywhere I go, and now you guys can as well. You can get 20% off free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code locked on at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. I also want to talk to you all about another sponsor of our episode of Locked On You Say, our friends at Fedor Together. You can download the app today, and it's an opportunity to Get it money instantly and not alone. Because if your back bracket is busted, but you want to stay in the game, introducing Bedor Together, the first comprehensive daily fantasy sports platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against them. Pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join daily fantasy sports movement today. Better Together is the first co cooperative daily fantasy sports application, it provides that sense of camaraderie and enhances the social experience of watching sports makes you realize daily fantasy sports is fun alone but like a lot of things it's better with friends so you can put your group chat to the test and let's prove if yours is the best you can download better or together now from the app store and sign up using promo code locked on for a free five dollar entry into an ncaa basketball contest play with me in a contest on thursday friday saturday or sunday and remember that code locked on all caps no spaces because winning alone is fun but it's better or together Max, coming back in this one, we've talked about three of the most touted Utes in this year's draft class. Got to talk about the last one in Sione Vaki, a true game changer speed wise. Yes, his 40 time didn't impress, but we're talking about a guy who reached, I think it was 22 or maybe 20. And I know that's a big difference in miles per hour, like with his speed on the field, got some versatility, made some unreal plays on both sides of the field. Defensively, a strong open field tackler, a guy who can play a lot of different positions for you and effective in the box as well, too, with some of that strength. And, you know, as a running back can be shifty, has that breakaway speed we highlighted and offers you a little something as a pass catcher who's able to make guys miss in space. Where do you currently have Baki projected to go? Uh, he is a really interesting player. I think I, mm -hmm. I keep saying he's kind of like the warm up we're gonna get for next year and Travis Hunter. Uh, yeah, gonna, he, he's gonna be a guy who's gonna be like a top probably ten pick in the draft, and we're gonna be like we're gonna be uh, that debate's gonna be wh where are you playing? Where do you play him at both? Like like Colorado did. Uh, Vak is kind of the same way. Now, of course, he's not a, as elite of a prospect as Travis Hunter will be, but I still think this is a guy that you could take. I would you could justify taking him in the third round. Honestly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. Uh, calling you crazy for doing that. I, I think one of the funny things with the PFF uh, draft guy, which you can find on PFF.com, uh, Trevor Sikma is an excellent job putting it together, our lead draft analyst. He uh, So he has like profiles for every player and every position that, we, that he's scouted so far. He has two separate profiles for Vaki, one at running back uh, and one at safety. Now I will say Vaki at the combine, I believe Connor Rogers, uh, who works with us at PFF, I believe he interviewed him and he was talking to Vaki about uh, where do you want to play full time? And Maki did say he wants to play defense full time. So I think he does want to play safety. We'll see if obviously he'll play probably wherever the NFL team wants him to play. Uh, but he wants to play safety full time. I, I think he's a little stiff in the hips. I think that's why he's probably going to fall down boards a little bit. Um, and yeah, the speed, the long speed isn't great, but I will say his explosiveness is really, really good. He actually, he ran a one, five, four, 10 yard split, which is 84th percentile for safeties. And then, uh, his vertical jump was 91st percentile. And his broad jump was 79th percentile. So really good explosiveness. Long speed isn't there for sure. So maybe you don't want to play him at a free safety role. But I think in the slot, in the box, that's where I think Vaki can really uh, thrive, honestly. And then obviously, like I said before, I mean, he played running back for the first time. And he looked really, really good at, at running back, uh, honestly. So uh, I, I think he's a guy that has positional versatility. I think you can play him at both. Um, and that's why I think he could ultimately be a, a day two pick in the NFL draft. Yeah, I mean, he is just tremendous upside to your point about why you'd consider taking him in round three. And I do think it's an interesting conversation of, yes, he wants to play defense, but if I was an NFL team, he has, like I said, a lot more experience defensively is where you feel like just at the collegiate level. But those, man, those flashes he showed at running back definitely seemed rare. And I think it's really interesting when push comes to shove at this exact moment, I feel like I have to go with the body of work and say defense. Although man, some of those highlights, Max, if I, I could go back to the one play against USC, he had that one yeah. cut 
if you know what I'm talking about. Like, that's mm-hmm. just a cut. Like, a lot of guys have been playing running back their whole life, and you don't see him make a cut of that special caliber that it just gets me tempted to see about, like, what he could do on the offensive side of the ball at the NFL level. If you were an NFL team drafting him, would you say, no, you're going to be a defensive back, or would you still be like, ah, I might want to see we have a running back? Oh, I – I'd be hard pressed to not at least try him at running back. And then that, mm-hmm. that speed that the problem is uh, with, with the issue with safety and that speed, like I said, is below average. The speed is actually above average for a running back, uh, which yeah. is about 61st percentile. Now, of course, he's a little undersized for running backs at 5'11, 210. You can put on a little bit of weight mm-hmm. probably, but um, I, I like him at both. I do think long term he's going to end up at safety. Um, and obviously, that's a more valuable position in the NFL, right, uh, safety than running back. But uh, I, I do, like I said, I, I, I'm not one of the ones that says, oh, you know, it was fun at Utah, but like you actually got honed in at one position. He showed enough stuff at both positions for an NFL team to take him. And, and hey, if they, if there's a crowded room at safety and they need help in the backfield, he's a guy that can go over and play. I know NFL is a very hyper specialized league. And I know in college football, it's very hyper specialized too. Uh, but he's one of those rare guys that, like, okay, if you really need him to play uh, at one of these positions, I mean, he could in a pinch do it for you, like he did for Utah this past year. So, uh, I again, I'm not one of the ones that says, "Oh, he's he's definitely a safety. He's, he's yeah. never playing running back again." I think there's a chance that he does play running back at least a little bit in the NFL too. Yeah, I hope he does or get the ball in his hands as a returner. In some ways, it could yeah. be fun. He did some wildcat at Utah, so be interesting to see what what teams want to do with him. So we feel pretty good. Those are the four Utes that are probably going to get drafted. There are a couple other guys who could make. Who are, I'm just interested to see how they how it goes for them. Right, Devon Vale is a guy who put up some big numbers really last year at Utah. This year he still did good at over 600 yards, but you know the passing game wasn't there with Bryson Barnes. To Devon Vale is not the most athletic guy, although he ran an okay 40 time. You get another guy in Keaton Bills who's been an interior offensive lineman for Utah for a few years now. He's done some really nice things there too, and then you get a lengthy corner in miles battle who didn't get a combine invite but still that size and length might intrigue teams as a special teams guy potentially even how do you see the rest of the draft class that of guys hoping to be pro ute soon yeah i don't think i think we hit on everyone that will be drafted i don't think there's anyone else i think that will will actually end up getting drafted i think devon bailey is probably the guy i would look to next and and then keaton bills after that is like priority Mm -hmm. free agents i can see for some teams but uh vele yeah vele has got some intriguing stuff man uh, obviously a bigger receiver, long arms can go up and get it. Um, I, I, I like him as a, as a camp body and, and you see what you get with him when you, when you bring him into camp. Uh, but like I said, I, I don't see him actually ending up getting drafted. Keaton Bill is another guy that I like, uh, as a developmental interior office line guy that you could bring in miles battle had an excellent combine. I, I, again, I don't think he's getting drafted, uh, but he tested out as a 95th percentile corner at the combine. Um, yeah, I, I think, think it's, pro, it's pro day. Actually, he didn't get a combine invite. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. It's pro day. That's what I meant. Um, and, and Thomas Yasmin, another guy that I think uh, oh. will, will, might get a camp invite too. I know he's kind of, um, you know, Utah's had a good run of tight ends and we'll, we'll have one coming mm-hmm. up this year. Thankfully, come, finally come back from injury and break. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Yasmin's a guy that again, not getting drafted, uh, but I could see him potentially getting a camp invite and then we'll see from there, honestly, and see if he can make a roster from there or a practice squad even from there. But uh, yeah, those, those are the other guys I think that are yeah. worth shouting out. But I think the the ones that we talked about before in uh, Jonah Ellis, Cole Bishop, Sione Baki, and Satoa uh, Laumea, I think those are the guys that I would say are, are going to get drafted and the rest are probably undrafted free agents right now. I would agree. I think the one guy, and I'm so I just forgot him off the top of my head. I really like Thomas Yasmin in terms of like just mm-hmm. the moments and the big plays and the highlights he can provide. But it wasn't always consistent. But the moments were there, and just that physical frame. It seems like he has the chance to be like he was just a man amongst boys. Sometimes, right? It goes back to the the hurdle against Colorado, the long touchdown against USC. It's a large catch radius. He moves pretty well. Why do you think NFL teams are probably going to be like ah maybe well like or are going to pass on him on the draft and then would bring him into camp? Because I, I can understand it, but as I said, just part of me being like. Man, seven, there's a lot of guys with potential in the seventh round. I just feel like if things could click with him, there could be a chance for something special. Yeah, just he didn't do much this year. I mean, he, mm-hmm. last year he had uh, 13 catches for about 300 yards. This year he had eight catches for 89 yards. So it's yeah. just a lot of projection with him there. Mm-hmm. But he did – I mean, he, did, he, was, he got open at a good rate this year. Um, I, I Again, I like some of his potential that he has. I just – it's tough for me to say, oh, yeah, this guy's getting drafted when, it, you know, he's just yeah. – He's not a guy that's really produced too much uh, for Utah. So, um, and that's even with uh, Grant Keith being out with an injury too. He still didn't do too much. So, 
Again, I, I don't think he's any yeah. drafted, but I, I could see him getting a camp invite for sure. Because I think, I, like I said, I think there are some intriguing stuff, uh, measurables that he brings to the table. Uh, I just don't quite see him getting, uh, you know, getting ultimately picked within the first 250, I think, or total pick or something like that. I, I don't think he's one of the top 250 players, probably. You're right. To your point about how forgettable his last season was, I had forgotten about his stats off the top of my head, about the lack of only under 100 yards and all the things of that nature. Hence why all the plays I brought up occurred last season, not the most recent one we and just wrapped up. So, Did he have a season-ending injury? I said, he sees like he did. played five games. And then he, yeah, he, he did have a season-ending injury too. But okay. even in those five, it was disappointing. And like you said, I felt like he was getting open sometimes. They would just miss him. I felt like there were chances to utilize him better. That's where I'm really interested with him and Devon Bailey how they do at the NFL level. I don't think that either of them will end up lighting the world on fire, especially mm. not like a guy like Bailey just because of the speed. And, and Yasmin most likely won't either. But the quarterback situation, Bryson Barnes was a good backup, but he was a backup quarterback for a reason. Missed throws and especially a Utah backup quarterback, right, where you're not going to throw the ball a ton anyway. So I didn't feel yeah. like Bailey and Yasmin were maximized. Can they be maximized better at the NFL? But there's a lot of that. Like a lot of the other guys are going to be really talented too, of course. So I'm very curious to see how those guys' futures end up shaking out. It's going to be a fun to draft to see where all of these guys end up at. And I mentioned the future. We're a little under six months out from the start of the college football season. So Max, want to get your early thoughts on Utah's first year in the Big 12 in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you all about another sponsor of our episode of Locked On Utes today, our friends at Nissan. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at nissan each week we're picking one of the teams that stands out a team that's pushed it further than the rest just like any of the all-new 2024 nissan suvs these guys were able to take it to the next level got to go back to the nc state wolf pack for what they were able to do and they're obviously this week's nissan rogue the team that absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in their first two games of the tournament with wins over texas tech and then oakland everyone's kind of crazy matt golk being the guy that everyone was losing their mind over and nc state was the one with dj burns able to get through so now they'll have their opportunity to take on marquette in the sweet 16 they say you in order to win life you have to go rogue and that's exactly what nc state the wolf pack were able to do take the nissan rogue nissan pathfinder or nissan armada and go find your next big adventure you can shop nissanusa.com also want to talk to you all about another sponsor of our episode of locked on use today our great friends at uccu Here's some exciting news. UCCU has just elevated their checking accounts by enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools. Elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle, security, and financial benefits. Lifestyle benefits alone include cell phone protection, roadside assistance, telehealth with 24-7 access to lic licensed health professionals with zero copay, and exclusive savings on travel, shopping, and dining. And elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following. Use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month or make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more and maintain an average daily balance of $1,500. Otherwise, UCCU Elevated Checking is only $6 a month. You can visit uccu.com to open an Elevated Checking account online or stop by any branch to open an account. UCCU, love where you bank. Max, I've talked a lot about on this show how high I am on this Utah team coming into the season. I know it's their first year in the Big 12. I believe they are the best team in the conference. I believe they have a great chance to win it. And if you, of course, if they win it, a great chance to reach the college football playoff because of the returners and even some players where they're losing guys at like defensive back. I have a long tradition of Utah replacing defensive backs very well. So mm -hmm. why would I expect that to stop this year? I feel like this is a really good team. I think it's a top 10 team with a chance to be even better than that. I'm curious for you, Max, what are your way too early thoughts on this Utah football team? Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I, I think they're probably the early favorite I would have in the Big 12 right now. I don't think I would have them as a top 10 team, but I think it's a wide open Big 12 conference next year. Obviously, with Texas and Oklahoma both leaving. Um, I, I again, I, I think Utah and obviously Utah, Arizona State, Arizona, and Colorado are joining it as well. Um, I, I think there are certainly uh, parts of Utah that I'm really excited about. I'm excited about uh, obviously Cam Rising coming back from Torrey ACL we had in that Rose Bowl against Penn State a couple of years ago. Uh, I'm saying about Brand Keithy coming back as well, who I consider to be one of the three best tight ends probably in college football. Uh, both very veteran players, both seventh-year players. Um, I'm excited about that. I do think there are some question marks on the Utah offense, like who will be the pass catchers outside of uh, Brand Keithy. I, I liked what Money Park showed a little bit last year. Uh, Mooney McLean is another guy. Uh, I, I liked some of the stuff he showed as well. Um, the offensive line has got to be retooled as well. I think that's another thing. And then that's the defensive line. But you mentioned it. I mean, this is a Utah team that always – loses some key players and all of a sudden 
you know, with the, one of the best coaching staffs, I think, in the country, led by Kyle Whittingham and, and Andy Ludwig. Uh, they've done a terrific job of, of coaching up the next guys and next guys. And, and even with, you know, as Kyle Whittingham would say, a pig farmer, a quarterback, they were able to beat some really good teams. Uh, so I, I, I think that's one of the big things and why I always will be high on Utah is that the coaching is, is some of the best in the country uh, with Kyle Whittingham there. And uh, I love Zamaya Vaughn, too, at corner. I think he's a really, really good corner. Um, I, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I like about Utah, namely Keithy and Rising coming back from injury. Uh, and that's why I think right now I'd say they're the favorite in the Big 12. But like I said, it is a wide open conference. And I don't think there's a really true, uh, really, really good team, like a top 10 or top five team. Uh, I think there's a, there's a few teams that put in the top 20. Uh, and I think Utah is probably the, the top out of those teams. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch it all play out. should be a great season coming up with the first one in the new look Big 12. Just like it's going to be a ton of fun to watch how the rest of the draft season plays out. With Like we said, at the time we're recording this, we are exactly a month out from the draft. Max, if people want more draft coverage, whether it's for Utah or just in general, and more college football coverage, where should they head over to? Yeah, so you can go to pff.com. That's where all my articles are uh, are living there. Um, then also I uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, or X at Max Chadwick CFB. And then I host the PFF College Football Show, which is on YouTube and anywhere you get podcasts, too. Max, thank you again for joining us. Great stuff. Of course. Thanks, JT. That's going to do it for today's edition of Locked On News, and that'll wrap us up for this week when we come back next week talking more things from spring ball. Also, the men's team, a chance in the NIT. So much going on up on the hill, and we are your place for daily Utah sports content as it relates to the University of Utah. Have a great weekend. We look forward to seeing you next week.